Hello Aviator, Sky here, and today we've got an interesting fighter jet to discuss, which will surely lead us to answer a few straightforward yet important questions. Let's dive in. Meet Mikayan MiG-35. The MiG-35, classified by NATO as Fulcrum F, is a Russian multi-role fighter, a thorough improvement of the base model MiG-29. The history of MiG-35 kicks off in the 1980s, when the skies were filling up with the fourth generation fighter jets from all over the world. Already then, upon commissioning the MiG-29, the aviators from the Mikoyan Design Bureau knew that this aircraft would need to be upgraded fairly soon in order to be able to compete with the US and European fighters. The eventual result of such upgrade was the MiG-29M. This aircraft was more reliable, had better efficiency and could utilize a large variety of weapon types. Six prototypes were tested in flight, and the fighter, labeled MiG-33, was supposed to be used by the military. However, the 1990s arrived, and the fully upgraded fighter became the least important issue of the day for Russia. Even the MiG-29 acquisitions ceased in 1992. Nevertheless, fueled with its own resources and passion, the design bureau continued its work. On the brink of the 2000s, the MiG-29 M2 was created, a two-seated version of the original M-Jet. Finally, in the 2000s, due to Russia's focus on military modernization, the fighter aircraft got a chance to be reborn. In 2007, the M2 was showed off in India, and it carried the name MiG-35. The jet took part in the MMRCA, Medium Multi-Role Combat Aircraft Military Tender. The MMRCA was labeled the mother of all tenders, with the Indian Air Force wanting to acquire 126 fighter jets. Of course, it became a frenzy, with Eurofighter Typhoon, FA-18EF Super Hornet, the Su Rafale, JAS-39 Gripen, and F-16V Viper, all wanting a slice of the cake. The French, the Su Rafale, came out as a winner, but the contract was chopped and changed in many ways. They are still discussing conditions and cost of the contract, which has shrunk, and the order stands at 36 jets only. Two factors can explain why the MiG was defeated. First, India already has a large fleet of Russian aircraft, the MiG-29K on aircraft carrier ships and the Su-30 jets on land. The unwillingness to become dependent on a single supplier is quite logical, so the country prefers to build its supply chain from different countries. Besides, the Indian Air Force has had past experience with the French fighters, the Jaguar and the Mirage. The second factor is that the MiG-35 received a huge amount of upgrades and innovations compared to the MiG-29. However, even though it gave it an increased potential, it also carried risks. The prototype turned out to be raw, and many of its systems did not comply with the required characteristics. Even though it was a sad outcome, this aircraft still had a future. At the start of 2017, the fighter was officially presented for flight testing and placed in line for use by the Russian Aerospace Forces. So now, the question that is asked by many enthusiasts. What are the differences between MiG-35 and MiG-29? How come this aircraft got so much fame and attention, if all it is is an upgraded version of the previous fighter? Well, to find an answer to that, we'll have to check under the bonnet. At first glance, these planes are identical, but this is only the initial impression. The first main difference lies in the maximum takeoff weight. With both jets sharing similar dimensions, the MiG-35 can lift off at 24,500 kilograms, more than 54,000 pounds, versus the MiG-29's 18,000 kilograms, about 29,700 pounds. Yes, most of this difference is due to the amount of fuel carried, but still, a 6.5 ton difference is substantial. The aircraft got quite buff. The MiG-35 received many upgrades to its design, prolonging its lifespan and reliability. The operating costs dropped by more than a double, while flight time increased from 2.5 to 6,000 hours per plane. A significant experience from working with old and new models of serious production aircraft aided with the MiG-35 development. A lot of technological advancements of the MiG-35 were previously worked into its close relative, the MiG-29K, a carrier-based version of the fighter. The reinforced chassis also came from the MiG-29K. Thanks to that, the fighter jet, which got significantly heavier, is able to take off and land on damaged short runways. Most of the modern fighters would be risking to get seriously damaged in such conditions. The power plant consists of two RD-33MK turbofan jet engines. 
Well, the thrust didn't change much, 53 kilonewtons during normal flight and increasing to 88 kilonewtons in afterburner mode. With two of these engines, the aircraft was never shy of power. This time, the engineers focused on reliability, which improved drastically, practically doubled. Right now, someone is definitely eager to say, this is a brand new super fighter jet, why the hell are you focusing on the service lifespan? The answer is simple. One of the main flaws of the MiG-29 was the price and the difficulty of its maintenance, which was similar to that of the larger aircraft, such as the Su-27. Comparing the two, the Su-27 is a step ahead, as it is a larger and a more powerful fighter, which meant that there was little reason to go for the MiG-29. In fact, for that reason, the Sukhoi became so popular over the last 20 years. However, now, a major increase in lifespan and reliability of the MiG-35, coupled with the price and easy maintenance, makes it a no-brainer for the military. Let's go on. Combat Capabilities while the MiG-29 has 6 hardpoints, MiG-35 got upgraded to 8, with 4 on each wing. The aircraft can use the full range of weapons available to the modern Russian fighters, including air-to-surface missiles, which allows it to attack ground and seaborne surface targets. That is considered a large leap forward, since the MiG-29 could only be used in dogfights, and that's not enough for modern warfare. Whilst the structural elements and the power plant have undergone some modification, the avionics of the fighter jets saw a complete overhaul. MiG-35 has a quadruplex redundant fly-by-wire electronically signaled control system, with the MiG-29 having the manual hydrodynamics systems, which is obsolete today. Another serious upgrade is the Zhuk ME radar system, with an active scanner array, which is capable of detecting and tracking up to 30 targets simultaneously at a distance of 160 kilometers, or 86 miles. Active Electronically Scanned Array, or AESA radar, is considered to be one of the technical requirements for the first generation fighters, and only the most advanced modern combat vehicles are equipped with it. In addition, the cockpit and the helmet of the pilot were improved, as well as protection and electronic warfare systems. How about a little demagogy? Let's say we've got the MiG-35. Why do we even need it? Despite the harsh competition, it has prospects both in Russian aviation and on the international market. Of course, the world is slowly being won over by the next-gen fighters, such as the F-22, F-35, Su-57, J-20 and J-31, and they will bust the skies. However, this will take time, since the new airplanes are really expensive and they all have problems. So it is too early to decommission the planes of the previous generation. The world aviation companies continue to offer their veteran aircraft, constantly upgrading them. The best example would be the Boeing, with their F-15 and F-A-18, which are not even thinking of going off the stage, just like the European and Russian aircraft. In Russia, while the Su-57 is being commissioned, the Su-35 is considered to be the main modern fourth-generation fighter. A great plane, but it's heavy and expensive, so won't fit everywhere. There is talk of a fifth-generation lightweight fighter, something like the F-35 from Lockheed Martin. But little is known about this project, and such a complex program might take 10 to 15 years to come to life. And so, here is the MiG-35, which is an efficient, reliable and lightweight fighter. It can be bought in bulk, and can easily replace a fleet of old machines, both in Russia and in other countries that already have experience with the old MiG-29 jets. Unfortunately, the recent economic difficulties didn't allow the aviators to prop up their production quickly enough, and so the distribution of the aircraft has only begun. One of the main clients is the Russian Aerospace Force, who are waiting for MiG Corporation to supply them with 24 new single-seater and two-seater aircraft, with some already delivered. Besides Russia, the planes may be supplied to parts of Asia and the Middle East. All in all, that's the history of the MiG-35. We can only wish it luck and great battles in the conquering of the aviation market. Let's just hope that we won't see it in action in the real war. That's it for today. Thanks for watching. As per usual, if you have an opinion, please share it in the comments below. Fast flights and soft landings to you.